So we would like to acknowledge that we are gathered today on the traditional ancestral and unceded territory of the Musqueam people. And so welcome again. Uh, this is the second uh, Oceans and Fisheries Quantitative Seminar. And uh, today uh, we have uh, Dr. Roberto Lacandio uh, giving the seminar. And uh, Roberto just completed his uh, PhD uh, earlier this year. Uh, and uh, he uh, focused on simulation evaluation modeling of uh, say different management procedures, <laughs> looking at a whole variety of different types of approaches to evaluating management procedures under time varying productivity. And uh, so Roberto uh, has, uh, he, he came from um, Chile to do his PhD, study, PhD studies at UBC. Um, approximately 10 years, he took some leave and then came back again. Uh, went down to Seattle, took uh, courses down there for uh, at least a year or so. And, uh, but then he's been uh, really hard at work. He's been really productive. I think Roberto has at least 15, between 15 to 20 peer reviewed published papers, which is really outstanding for a PhD graduate. And uh, he's currently working with me as a postdoc um, on a project looking at passage options on the uh, Willamette River, uh, passage options for Chinook salmon. So with that, I'll put it over to Roberto. Okay, um, thank you so much, uh, for the introduction. I'm going to uh, turn off my camera because my internet is not very good here, actually. <clears throat> so I, I changed the uh, title of my presentation to just a harvest control rule for uh, dealing with a persistent change in population parameters to uh, make it more uh, general. <clears throat> and for today, um, First, I'm going to talk, uh, talk why it's important to deal with change in fish productivity. Then I will describe the current method used to find uh, harvest strategies robust to change in fish productivity. Then for the third part of this talk, I will present a few results for a simulation study where I use a, a relative new approach to find a optimal uh, harvest rate under region chief. And finally, I will present uh, some uh, conclusions, um, possible, uh, possible uh, directions. <clears throat> so first, uh, why is important? Because change in fish productivity has, has implication for a fishery and a fishery management. And at present, there are many evidence that uh, vital uh, population parameters are uh, time bearing. These parameters include uh, recruitment, natural mortality, and somatic growth parameters. For example, the stock recruit parameters, the productivity and current capacity can have persistent year of low productivity followed for years, follow for years of high productivity. Well, here I'm referring to this change as regime shifts. Um, recent studies, studies have found that we can have a regime shift in productivity, but also in, uh, in current capacity. Uh, for example, a recent meta-analysis found that from 200 and plus stock, half of them had some sort of uh, uh, time-bearing stock uh, some sort of uh, time-bearing stock at good parameters. Well, this situation is problematic for uh, fishery management because in many situations, uh, we don't know if a, a decrease in stock biomass is due to overfishing or to a low a productivity regime. In contrast, when stock have a high productivity regime, managing Management uh, regulation need to control for fleet overcapacity to avoid uh, overcapacity when the stock go back again to a low productivity a regime to avoid um, overfishing. However, uh, the, uh, detecting uh, time bearing population parameter is quite difficult. It uh, requires long time series of information and population models feed to data to infer these changes. Overall, um, there are two ways 
to deal with this so-called um, regime shift? Well, one option is to use a statistical tools to detect this change and react as soon as possible to the regime. A second option is uh, develop uh, harvest strategies robust to regime shifts. These harvest strategies need to uh, balance uh, well acceptable yields and, and conservation goal, no matter the uh, regime shift type. Well, in general, there are two traditional approaches that have been used to find harvest strategies. Uh, these are the stochastic and dynamic programming, SDP, and uh, closed loop simulation, and also called management strategy evaluation, MSC. In short, um, the, the stochastic dynamic programming uh, find the best uh, habit control rule by optimizing a utility and utility function as, uh, for example, the total catches. Instead, the MSC approach, the uh, have a control rule parameter of the have a control rule are set a priori uh, uh, by the user. From my point of view, uh, this is a, a fundamental problem with the traditional MSC approach because it only allows to examine a, a very a limited range of potential have a control rules. In contrast, the SDP, the uh, common control rule is totally uh, flexible. In other words, it can take any shape and the have a control rule is fully optimal for the problem because, because it maximizes a utility function. However, the, the stochastic dynamic programming um, has a limitation as well. Um, and the most important are that they, it only can apply to uh, population dynamic models that have a, sing, a single a dynamic state. And it, it is quite difficult to incorporate observation and process error in the same state a dynamic at the same time. However, uh, there's another approach that, uh, that has not been uh, widely used uh, to find uh, have strategies. And this is the stochastic optimization in policy space, SOPS. Um, this method share features with, with SS, SDP and can also incorporate MSC components as well. In this case, the uh, have a control rule is defined by a deterministic function with unknown uh, have a control rule parameters and use uh, and a stochastic nonlinear optimization to find have a control uh, a have a control parameter that uh, maximize a utility function. <clears throat> the need of this approach is that can replicate the optimal uh, have a control rule found in 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 SDP, but uh, avoiding the sophisticated mathematical programming required in SDP. Also, the uh, SOPs allow for more complex uh, population dynamic models, allow for process and observation error, and the have a control rule can be found using feedback control as in the uh, traditional MSE. And additionally, additionally the uh, have a control rule can be quite uh, flexible. Uh, this, uh, this approach saves a lot of uh, simulation time uh, compared with the uh, traditional MSC approach. In this presentation, I'm going to show, show a few results for optimal uh, have a control rule using SOPs under a uh, regime shifts. <clears throat> well, in a, a traditional MSC, a have a control rule is to prescribe a quota given a biomass estimate. And there are many, many uh, have a control rules. And the parameter values that define this rule are typically arbitrary. For, for example, uh, here in the right plot shows the typical 1040 rule applied in the US. 
this uh, rule said no fishing at uh, 0 0.1 of the uh, fishing biomass B0, which is the uh, red line, and, uh, and then a maximum uh, fishing rate over 0 0.4 of B0, the, uh, the green line. Usually the performance of this rule are tested by simulation against other rules with also arbitrary parameters. In the case of this study, the, the habit control rule was uh, flexible. Here shown in the uh, blue box. The quota for a given year is determined by two unknown parameters. Uh, the minimum base stock and the and the cool slope. Both B mean and cool slope can have any value between zero and one. Um, for example, if a uh, cool slope is one and B mean is 0 0.5, the habit control rule is a fixed scaling rule, the blue line in the left uh, plot. Um, for this rule, below B mean, there's no fishing, and the slope of the blue line, a cool slope, will indicate how fast the quota increases as the biomass increases above B mean. Now, if B mean is zero and a cool, a cool slope is 0 0.5, uh, for example, the habit control rule changed to a fixed harvest rate, um, which, uh, which is the red line in the right panel. For, for this rule, the quota increases linearly with the biomass at a rate of uh, 0 0.5, which is the uh, blue line in the right panel. As uh, you can expect in the optimization, you can have uh, different values for a B mean and cool slope uh, depending on the problem. Uh, I use two utility functions to find B mean and cool slope, a risk neutral utility function that maximize the total catch and a risk averse utility function that allow for small catches even when the stock is even when the stock size is low. Therefore, the risk averse utility function avoid uh, fishery closures. It is important to mention that the fixed scheme rule is obtained when the risk neutral utility is maximized. Um, the fixed harvest rate is obtained under a risk averse utility function. I use a closed loop simulation to evaluate the optimal harvest rate, uh, uh, sorry, the uh, harvest control rule under a regime shift. In short, a, a closed loop simulation no, no, not only uh, simulate the stock and efficient uh, uh, dynamics, but the full uh, management cycle, that is the data collection, the stock assessment, which uh, provide a biomass estimate for the habit control rule to prescribe a quota. Um, this quota generate a fishing mortality, uh, which is applied to, uh, to the population. This loop is, is uh, repeated uh, many years, then, um, we can measure how good or how bad the habit control rule performs in terms of economic and conservation goals. For example, average yield, annual catch variability, and overfishing. Here, I include a, a quotation mark for the habit control rule to indicate that after run the close after run the close loop simulation we obtain the optimal uh, having control rule for the problem, which is uh, different to the um, a traditional um, approach, uh, MSC approach. For this study, I use three biomass dynamic model to simulate regime shift in productivity and in current capacity. However, here I am presenting the result for the continuous and one discrete model. For the continuous model, 
the harvest and the biomass uh, grow is continuous in time. Um, this model simulates a year-round fishery. For the discrete model, a biomass estimate is known before harvest. Uh, this, is, this situation is similar to the Peruvian anchovy um, fishery where there are two biomass surveys before the harvest season. <clears throat> I simulate three stock assessments with different complexity, but here I'm presenting the results where the stock assessment was the simulated biomass index, index or a database model. <clears throat> also, I simulate three stock dynamics for anchovy, hake, and redfish, but I am presenting the result mainly for anchovy. As I mentioned, <clears throat> I uh, maximize two utility functions, a risk neutral and a risk averse uh, function. And the performance of the habit control rule uh, were evaluated in terms of economic and conservation um, goals. Well, um, I will show a few basic results so you can have an idea about this approach. Here, this plot compares the peak scheming rule for the continuous and uh, for the discrete model without observation error. I found that the, the optimal uh, having control rule, B mean and Q slope, depended on the population dynamic model. For example, under a regime shift in productivity and constant current capacity at one, B mean was 0 0.5 for, for the discrete model and 0 0.2 for the continuous model. And both uh, had a Q slope equal to one. Again, we know observation error. Now, when I include observation error, I obtain different B mean and Q slope between the continuous and the discrete model. This indicates that it's important to define if we are modeling a seasonal or a year round fishery. However, I also found that the, the continuous model was more robust to increasing observation error. <clears throat> this plot shows what happened with the uh, habit control rule with uh, without observation error. This situation can be seen across regime shift and population models. I'll start with the regime shift in, in productivity and the discrete model. The red line in the left uh, a panel show the thick scaling rule without observation error. Here, uh, B mean is 0 0.5 and, and Q slope is 1. With observation error, the blue line, B mean decreased, but, but also Q slope. Uh, therefore, with observation error, the optimal rule is open the fishery at a lower stock size, but uh, fishing. At, at a lower rate. Now, with a regime shifting current capacity, uh, capacity, same situation, both B mean and Q slope decreased. But as you can see, the fishery is open to a lower stock size compared with the regime shifting productivity. Therefore, for an optimal escaping rule, the minimum stock size needs to be more conservative under a regime shift in productivity. <clears throat> the plots on the right show the, uh, show the harvest rate that uh, produce this uh, harvest rate with an, with an uh, without observation error. Uh, for example, in the bottom um, right panel, under a discrete model um, with high observation error and, and current capacity regime shift, the Q slope <clears throat> always, always suggests that the harvest rate uh, need to be lower than that humus Y levels. Now, for the risk averse utility function, I also found different Q slope 
um, between the biomass dynamic models. In this plot, the continuous model, the blue line, was more aggressive in terms of the optimal uh, harvest rate that the, that the discrete model, <clears throat> the red line, under the regime shift in productivity. This makes sense because the discrete model has a biomass estimate before the harvest. This reduces the risk of overfishing. Uh, that's why this particular um, model, a discrete model, perform very well in terms of conservation uh, uh, goals. The bottom panel shows the results for the range shift in current capacity. <clears throat> for the continuous model, the blue line, the optimal harvest rate is fishing at humus wide level, levels around 0 0.5 because the population growth parameter is not changing over time. Instead, um, for, the, for the discrete model, the red line, the optimum harvest rate is fishing at half of human Y, around 0 0.25, which is similar to the regime shift in productivity. So for the continuous model, the optimal uh, harvest rate, the blue line, <clears throat> need to be lower under the productivity regime compared with the current capacity regime shift. As you can expect, the continuous model, the average yield was higher than the discrete model, but the risk of not passing conservation objective was higher. On the contrary, the seasonal model with harvest before production has better performance in conservation goals. This plot, shows the average yield for the continuous model in blue and the discrete model in black. The red dot indicate the base case is an area which, which include high um, observation error and more uh, persistent regime shift. Overall, the continuous model overperformed the discrete model in terms of average yield, but as I mentioned before, at, at higher conservation risk. Uh, between a risk neutral and a risk averse uh, have a control rule, <clears throat> um, I didn't find much different in terms of average yield. Therefore, um, I could say that um, it is better to use a risk averse uh, have a control rule uh, to avoid um, many closures when we have a regime shifts. Also, I didn't find much difference in terms of average yield between a regime chief using these rules. So also I could, I could say that it's better to use a, a robust uh, habit control rule. <clears throat> um, it's better to use a habit, a habit control rule robust to change in productivity instead of uh, a current capacity. I also found that when the population growth parameter was low, for example, in redfish, the average yield is quite similar across population model and utility functions. Um, in this situation, the optimal um, uh, habit control parameters, B mean and Kuzlov, did, did not change much between models, as you can see here in the plot <coughs> by the <coughs> colors. Uh, be me in red and, and cool slope in gray for the risk averse and risk uh, uh, neutral, risk averse and risk uh, averse uh, models. I, I also investigate time bearing uh, uh, harder control rules. Overall, <clears throat> I didn't find much difference compared with the time invariant rules. The biggest difference occurred when the stock was productive, like in anchovy. In this case, the time bearing risk neutral and the time bearing risk averse uh, have a control rule over perform the time invariant optimal rule and the, the remaining shift in productivity. Here shown by the um, red um, box. 
in addition, I found that the that at time bearing humans Y having control room perform well in in terms of average yield under a regime shift under a regime shift in productivity. Well, some conclusions. So, what's what what optimal uh, however strategy perform better under regime shift? Well, it depends on many things. First of all, it depends on the <clears throat> regime shift. But for a stock like anchovy, the time bearing uh, having control rule um, perform better compared with time invariant risk neutral and risk averse uh, having control rule, but not a lot. So I could say that it is okay to use time invariant uh, having control rule. Now, for Hague and Redfish, for example, simple uh, habit rate uh, below human oil levels perform well under more under under both uh, regime chief. Uh, also, um, the, uh, the stochastic optimization in, in policy space allows for examining more and faster uh, carbon control rule and 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 OMs that the traditional MSC approach. Also, I should say that uh, we need uh, good, uh, good uh, design service because these are important to inform the having control rule in this kind of um, uh, approaches, uh, probably as well in any MSC. <clears throat> okay, this is the top, this is my presentation for today. Well, thank you very much, Roberto. Um, a lot of information packed into that talk. Um, uh, a lot of really interesting results. Uh, so I'd, I'd like to open it up for questions. And um, so, Vili, would you like to uh, manage the questions? Uh, yeah, I can try and do that. If they go in the chat. Um. But I would actually suggest that we just open the mics. Let me get to it. Uh, are there any questions? Yeah, Rob Bison has one. Where do you see that? <clears throat> so uh, basically in the chat, sorry, in the uh, participants box. So uh, let's, I'm gonna unmute uh, uh, Rob Bison. Say so, Rob, do you got a question there? Uh, can you hear me? Hello? No. Yes. Oh, good, good. Yes. Okay. Hello, Roberto. Hello. Um, at the near the end of this talk, you said for Hake and Redfish, simple harvest rules performed well below UMSY. I, I, I may have missed it, but how far below UMSY did they perform well? Um, let me see. Let me, maybe I can put some sample here. Um, I guess this is for Redfish. Um, I, I said, um, if, if I remember correctly, uh, I said um, for Redfish, um, I can't remember exactly the human soil um, value, but I, I can I can say maybe it's, it's not that much different, um, very close, maybe um, below. 10% said something like that. So 10% uh, less than less, yeah. than, 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 than UMSY. Okay. Level. So, so yeah. slight, just so not, not much below, but just, no. yeah, yeah. But this yeah. is, but this is only when uh, the growth uh, the growth parameter was low. Mm -hmm. Redfish, uh, cake. Uh, so, but then when you have a species like um, um, anchovy, this uh, situation is, uh, it's, it's different. Uh, the uh, you need to. They might see more difference in in terms of the uh, robust uh, uh, have a control rules. 
Su su suggesting that you may have to be further below UMSY yeah. in the case of anchovy? Yeah, okay. Yes, but also, yes, yes. Uh, like I mentioned, also depend on the um, uh, population dynamic model that uh, you're using. Here I described two, the, uh, um, a continuous model and a, and a, a discrete model. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the optimal uh, having control rule will tell you uh, how much is it, mm -hmm. how, uh, how below uh, can be and compared with the uh, uh, humus, humus Y levels. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, Randall, will you go next? Uh, yes, nice work, Roberto. I have a question though about the regime shifts that you explored. Could you explain a bit more the say, for example, the percent change in carrying capacity and percent change in productivity that you explored and how long of a period did you have for the particular regimes to persist before switching to another regime? Uh, okay, um, the, for, for the regime shift, like I mentioned, I simulate two regime shift, uh, uh, sim um, actually three. Um, uh, Regime chief in, in current capacity and in productivity, mm -hmm. and for for this, just I use um um let's say um a, a random walk uh with a, a high variability if I remember correctly uh, with a standard deviation of zero zero point four um and the output correlation was zero point seven. That, uh, that proves very long period of um, low and then high. Um, another option is uh, simulate a regime shift like in a, a stepwise, right? Go, go down for uh, 20 years, then go up for uh, 20 years. <clears throat> uh, this is an, another option to uh, simulate a, a, a persistent regime shift, but here, just to um, make this thing more simple, I think I use this this approach. This answered your question. I think it is. Then uh, Carrie. Uh, thank you, Roberto. Uh, I had a question about your conservation objectives and if they changed over time when your regime, especially your regime shifting in carrying capacity changed, or did you assume that those conservation objectives were constant or based on some base period? Or what did you do with those conservation objectives with time varying regimes? Uh, no, I, I didn't. It's a, a, a summary across the simulation that lasts, I mean, the. Uh, I run the model for uh, 500 years, and, and uh, I, uh, I uh, summarize the conservation, but also the economic uh, metrics uh, across all these uh, uh, 500 years. And but it was your conservation objective to reach, you know, a BMSY or a B naught or a proportion of that. But did your BMSY and B not change over time because it was in a regime shift? So was yeah. in effect your conservation goal changing over time, or was uh, it constant? No, no. Uh, uh, well, when the when the regime shift changed, it also uh, uh, changed the the uh, the reference uh, must Y. So I I, I correct uh, with that. Okay. okay, so there is time varying yes. conservation objectives. Yes, yes, but but the summary is across all the years. Yeah. Okay, thank you, and Robin. Hi, uh, thanks very much, Roberto. Very relevant, interesting talk. Uh, I just have a question about. Um, how frequently in your simulations were you re-estimating the parameters of the harvest control rule? And did you see that it was, did you look from time step to time step whether it was staying fairly consistent within a regime and then would change, uh, would detect a regime shift and change? Or was it, you know, shifting around from year to year? 
Uh, let me see if I understand your question. You are talking about the um, uh, hubble control rule parameters. Well, which which determine the shape of the harvest control rule, yes. Yeah. Um, I, well, it, in this approach, um, where I simulate this, um, the Raymond chief, you, the, the parameters that you obtain are, are after run the closed loop simulation. So you don't see if, if the, 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 the control rule parameter change over time, you, just, uh, uh, you get a, a value. So it's, 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 So your harvest control rule actually comes out at the end of the simulations. Yes, it, it, it's the different approach because if, if um, 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 as I mentioned in the, in the, in the introduction, there's, uh, there are two approach to find this uh, uh, control rule parameter. One is the uh, traditional MEC approach, where you specify the, the habit control rule parameter at the beginning of the problem, right? But in this uh, is, uh, model, it, 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 using the uh, stochastic optimization in parallel space, you, when you run the simulation, the closed loop, you get the optimal uh, having control rule parameter and the end of the simulation. So it's, it's, it's different. You know, you know, uh, the uh, as I mentioned the, in a, in the traditional MSC, you you specify the uh, control rule a parameter a priori before okay. running the, the MSC. So, okay. So you don't oh, see this. Okay. Uh, so you don't see this um, uh, the the change of uh, the control rule parameter in the model. You know, uh, you don't see this kind of. So if I so if I'm understanding correctly, then the idea is that then you would um, you would have your you, you've tested um, over a, a range of different uh, risk functions and um, scenarios in terms of regime shift and what comes out at the end is your robust harvest control rule and then that is what you would hand to a fishery manager and and recommend yeah. as uh, manage for management of the fishery. Yes, correct. So okay, if you see great. So you see here in, in this uh, in this slide, the you have two um, two uh, have a control rules parameters that are unknown. So you you maximize the function and you and you at the end uh, obtain your optimal uh, cost law um, and be mean. And depending on these two values, uh, uh, you're going to have different uh, have a control rules that, that that are going to be between a peak scheme rule or a, a hubble rate. So um, yeah. Great, thank you. Okay, uh, right now we have one more question. That's from Mike. Uh, thank you, Roberto. I'm wondering if you've thought about the possibility of correlated changes over multiple stocks and whether that might be more likely for productivity or for carrying capacity, whether it might be more likely for an anchovy than for a ground fish. And just wondering if the possibility of borrowing information from one stock for others could be informative or could be counterproductive. Um, well, in for this simulation, you use, uh, let me see if I understood the question. Um, maybe this is another approach because uh, uh, this is, uh, this is, this approach try, try to find robust, uh, have, a, uh, have a control rules for regime shift, but another approach is try actually estimate the actual actual change in alpha in in the productivity or beta in the current capacity using a statistical method. Um, for example, um, you can use the Campbell filter approach to estimate the change uh, uh, over time. Using this approach, you can borrow information from other stock to uh, 
try to estimate these alpha or beta changes. But uh, the thing that I found that uh, when you apply this method, it's are quite difficult um, to come up with the true change in alpha or beta. And detect and for detected change that are quite difficult because also you need a lot of information. You need a kind of a long time series of uh, spawner and a glute to run this camel filter method. But yes, it's possible. Okay, thanks. Okay, and Randall uh, wants a second serving. Yes, Roberto, I understand that you've come up with the uh, optimal parameters for the harvest control rules, but uh, I don't know whether you've looked at other indicators that would feed into that definition of optimal, such as the probability that the spawning stock biomass falls below some level or the frequency of closures of fisheries. Can you talk about those types of indicators, please? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, for, for I, I, um, I, I summarize this uh, uh, performance as well. Here I present uh, mostly the average GL across the simulation, but, but yes, I have a, a performance metrics that uh, uh, summarize the percent of uh, closures um, for each um, um, utility function. Also the variability, also the number of time that the the stock is overfish, or, or um, for example, yeah. But uh, for for save time, I just I present the the um, uh, the average yield because I guess it's it's, it's, it's more important for people, <clears throat> more well in general. But yes, uh, the method uh, allows to uh, include all kind of all these kind of uh, performance metrics, similar to a, 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 a traditional MAC. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so did the results uh, change much in terms of the optimal harvest control rule when you brought in those other measures of uh, outcomes? Frequency oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, in general, uh, we know that uh, when you apply a big scheme rule, right, uh, we know that the average yield is going to be higher I uh, compare with a fixed uh, a habit rate, but uh, we have a trade-off because uh, in using the uh, fixed scaling rule, you, you are going to have more uh, closures uh, compared with the fixed uh, habit rate. Right. But, uh, uh, you know, um, with the, with the with the optimization, uh, you can have more precision how much. So for example, um, running, um, if you maximize the total catch uh, using the, the, uh, this method, uh, you can have like a um, um, uh, back march to set how much you can uh, obtain uh, the maximum catch and uh, that you can obtain, yeah, uh, maximizing the fixed scaling rule. Right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, we don't have any more questions. So Murdoch. Yeah. So thanks again, Roberto, for um, really, uh, really uh, thorough and uh, detailed presentation on 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 a really different approach to uh, simulation and optimization. Uh, it seems like uh, <clears throat> a lot of us are focused on MSC and, and applying this approach. We, uh, let's say, uh, look at a uh, limited set of alternative uh, management procedures, but uh, this is kind of a refreshing approach, I think, because it allows us to go beyond that and, and go back to what could be optimal under these different regimes. So I think it's a really, really valuable contribution and uh, urge you to try to get this work published um, sooner rather than later. So thanks everybody for uh, participating and attending. Uh, thanks uh, to everybody who, all those uh, participants uh, who, who asked questions um, and uh, 
next week, uh, we'll have uh, Ray Hilborn giving a talk uh, looking at uh, various trade-offs uh, when trying to manage, uh, let's say, uh, overfished uh, stocks. Okay, so thanks very much again, and uh, I look forward to seeing, seeing you next week. Bye-bye.